Hello, trading is closed on September 8th, 2020. Uh, let's do our disclaimer, then go over our calls. Um, same old stuff, it's my plan for tomorrow. If you wanna risk your money on my plan, do it at your own risk. You have one announcement to make. I'm now tentatively scheduling the webinar we talked about for five minutes after the close of trading on September 23rd. Unless I hear from a lot of people tonight saying that time does not work for them, I'm going to assume it does and I'm going to start registration tomorrow. I plan to make a video instead, fell through for technical reasons, just found it hard to do. So we're back to the original plan of a webinar. Uh, this is around two weeks. I think it's two weeks from tomorrow. And we'll do it five minutes after the close. If you don't like the idea of that time, let me know and I will change it. Okay. Well, we looked for the pattern with the early high. This is it. Tomorrow also has the early high. We had a target. We said unless we gapped up smartly, that should print. And it did. There's a new target based on today's pattern, unless we get down smartly, which is certainly possible, that's favored to print. During the day, we got an ultimate buy signal. We traded higher, that's all we have to do. We got an ultimate buy signal here, and that worked. And we got a buy signal too, and we hit the target. We're now um, in the critical area in DeMarc's work. Here's his TDST line. You're not supposed to go more than one full bar under the line. And if you do, then support fails. So we could actually gap down tomorrow and, and go down tomorrow, even under this Bollinger Band. But that's support. And if we go any lower than that, then support breaks. Well, here's what we said, lower target, unless we gap up smartly, favorite to print. I couldn't rule it out. We actually did trade higher overnight, but that didn't happen. If you hear Noam Winsky, he thinks there might be a turn fairly soon based on astrological patterns. Hard to catch a falling knife, though, I'll tell you that. I'm going to assume this is the right count. I've been waiting for it for a long time. That's not the only count that works. I mean, this doesn't have to be the end of B. This could be A of B. Then this could be B of B. And then you could go up again. I don't think that's the most likely count. I'm going to assume that that's it. If that is it, you take A. And here's B. And wave C usually has some kind of relationship, both in magnitude and... Um, shape to wave A. So you have all these targets, none of which are particularly close at the time, at this time. So if that's the right count, we have a pretty big drop in front of us. Doesn't mean you go down every day. Doesn't even mean you go down tomorrow, even though futures have gapped down as I'm recording this. One thing that might give us cause for some short-term optimism is we're near the lower Bollinger Band. This is the E-mini contract. This doesn't count because that's a shortened session, holiday session. But here's the volume spike. And that typically occurs um, at or pretty close to the low of the move. So unless we overtake that volume spike, you would assume you're probably within a few days of a low. Wednesday features the early high doesn't mean you won't gap down. Today's pattern is normally bullish. When it's bearish instead, further weakness usually comes. Gapping and promptly overtaking the high of day kills the pattern. Looks quite unlikely at the present time, but you never know. There's a higher target unless we get down smartly. I think we'll see it tomorrow. 
So one's negative, one positive, mixed signal rules. Commonest thing is a gap and prompt move outside the range. Longer term, I think we've made a significant top. It was heralded by the sentiment indicators. They're not precise, but um, if you wait long enough, they usually work. It doesn't require us to drop every day, nor does it preclude strong rallies. But the odds are good last week's high will not be overcome anytime soon. And I've got much lower targets. As far as tomorrow's concern, we might be close to a short-term low because of the volume spike in the Bollinger Bands and the trade under the TDST line. We do have a higher target, but um, it's tough to catch a falling knife under this type of environment because the wave count suggests that the big drop has just begun and it should be comparable to the big drop we had earlier this year, even if we don't drop every day. And that's today's call.